Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Just ahead of Jeff Patterson, one of two guests of the day today. Donnie and Donnie presented by Able Auctions. Able Auctions services businesses throughout BC looking to liquidate their assets. Don't miss upcoming auctions, including a high-end fitness club in Port Alberni. Shaker machines, maybe, and industrial equipment and vehicles in Quinnell. If you are a business owner anywhere in BC looking to liquidate assets, email sales at ableauctions.ca. Just before, Jeff, you wanted to mention something? Uh, a couple of things quickly, folks. Uh, Rick Dutch, uh, happy birthday. Uh, he sent us an email. He said he took the day off to watch the show li uh, live. He loves the show. Took the day off to watch he the show? Live. Live. Wow. He usually PBRs awesome. and he you. loves us. I think he's out in Abbotsford. Uh, Rick Dutch, a uh, happy birthday. Good guy. How fast did Rick on his day off today into the show go? <laughs> what a mistake. What the hell did I do today? No, no. Burn no, a vacation no, day for this. Let, let me read this to you. Rick Dutch. Right around the shaker machines. <laughs> I'm a frequent writer into the show. Today's my birthday. I took the day off to watch. Great show. Keep it up, Rick. Uh, hey, Rick, you keep talking the way you do. Mispronounce everything all you want. It's okay. Don't worry. He will. <laughs> yeah, just listen to me. One more. Uh, this one's important. Chris. Hi, guys. A Canadian currently living in Barbados. Uh, listening and love the show. Uh, Barbados, I Googled it. It's in the Caribbean, Little Island. Uh, no, I, cause You I, had to Google to come up with that? Well, would you, do you think I, I say Barbados every day of the week? Like, uh, yeah, I had to Google it. I, I sent you, you a picture. Can you put the picture up of Barbados? No. Oh, jeez. I, uh, he sent me I sent you the a lowest picture. quality Can we get to photo? Jeff, please? Yeah, Je Jeff's gone. He left the Zoom, yeah. actually. He's done. If I'm not mistaken, I think Barbados has a great-looking flag. Yes, let's, let's get to do. Jeff. Let's get to Jeff. <laughs> I had a picture of Barbados in a sunset, beautiful palm trees. Like, you know what? Canucks uh, opening up their NHL season uh, tonight uh, in Edmonton. Here to talk about it from Sakaris and Price. Sorry about that, uh, Jeff. Jeff Patterson. Hey, guys. I'll take tropical islands for a thousand. <laughs> <of them. laughs> okay. What, what are you hearing about Brock Besser? Let's uh, get the record straight here. Well, I am uh, at home, not out on the road this season, unfortunately. Oh, so having to rely on others, uh, he's on the ice in Edmonton, but it doesn't look like he's going to play, which is unfortunate for him and for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, the mystery ailment, whatever it is that has kept him out for over a week now. Canucks had said they hoped he was going to be ready for game number one. Well, game one goes tonight in Edmonton, and it certainly doesn't sound like Brock Besser will be in the lineup. But the fact that he's on the ice tells you that he mm -hmm. is close and perhaps ready to go in Philadelphia. The other development there, guys, is... The Flyers claiming Zach McEwen off yes. waivers for the Vancouver Canucks. Yep. Game two of the season in Philly. We know over the long history of the Philadelphia Flyers, they have valued that oh, element boy. of toughness. And so the Flyers put a claim in and grab Zach McEwen. And wouldn't that be something if he's in the lineup on Friday looking for a measure of revenge against uh, his other National Hockey League team? We always ask this when a player leaves the Canuck organization. Zach McEwen, was he given a fair shot? I think he was, Donnie. I think uh, he has to own some of this. He had a really disappointing preseason. I know that he got in the scrap with Good Branson, and then uh, we saw the fight with Cassian last week that resulted in Cassian being put on the IR with a concussion. But it goes beyond fighting. Like, Zach McEwen was a good teammate. We saw last year, remember when he uh, took on Derek Forbert of Winnipeg, when Forbert was pushing Hoaglander around. Uh, but you got to be able to play in the National Hockey League. And for the same reasons that Gadjevich didn't really get a real look here uh, they talked about him being one-dimensional, that he didn't kill penalties, and that was what the Canucks were looking for. Zach McEwen, I think, was playing his best hockey in the National Hockey League when COVID struck originally, and he had a decent summer training camp ahead of the bubble, but was in and out of the lineup last year, uh, really fell out of favor with Travis Green. I mean, he was a part-time player, uh, had just one goal and one assist, two points. So, uh, you know, there just wasn't the bottom line with Zach McEwen, and I thought, and he said all the right things in Abbotsford when I, I had a great chat with him at training camp, where he knew that last year was a disappointment and he vowed that he was going to make amends and be a whole lot better. And then I thought was awfully quiet during the preseason and it becomes a numbers game. And he was making a little bit more than some other guys. And for cap reasons and cap flexibility, he became the odd man out. He gets placed on waivers, but I'm glad for him that he got claimed and he's going to get an opportunity. And I do think if he can elevate his game, uh, he could be one of those guys that uh, really finds a home in Philly and becomes a, a, fa a favorite of uh, the fans. We know the way that the uh, Philadelphia Flyer fans like their team to play hockey. 
Uh, you know, Jeff, it's interesting. Yesterday, I had a lot of texts saying, are the Canucks uh, tough enough? Or are they too soft? Are they one of the softest teams in the National Hockey League? And now the one guy that was willing to drop the gloves all the time is gone. Uh, is this team tough enough in your eyes now? I and mean, especially with McEwen gone, because you could have called him up. He was 45 minutes away. Yeah, I think it's a valid question. And we know that fighting is being eliminated from the game, but... Uh, there's still always going to be that element. I mean, hockey's a contact sport, and I think there's always room for guys that can play and can bring right. more than just being one-dimensional. It's unfortunate, uh, again, for Zach McEwen, because I, I think it was there. I think there was a spot for him, but he didn't really raise his level of play here in training camp in the preseason. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting, too, that Travis Green, he's an old-school guy. I think uh, he values that on teams. So I do think that this question about are they tough enough you look through their lineup, like if somebody wants to take liberties with Elias Patterson, I'm not mm -hmm. sure who That's the candidate it. is in that steps in. Luke Shen looks like he's going to be a depth defender. He's not going to be an every night player. So on those nights when he's not in the lineup, uh, and it can't ever just fall on one guy. So I think you'll hear a fair bit about team toughness and that Wolfpack mentality. But I, I think that's a valid question. If teams try to push the Vancouver Canucks around, I don't know how much pushback they have in this lineup as it's constructed. Um, we heard recently from a guest about uh, Tucker Pullman and the job he did against Connor McDavid in last year's playoffs. Who, who's the shutdown uh, pair uh, tonight and, and even going forward, uh, Jeff? Hughes, Pullman, OEL, Myers. What do you think? My sense is it's going to be Hughes and Pullman. I think last week in Edmonton, it was Hughes's preseason debut, but they tried to get him out there a fair bit against Connor McDavid. Talk about trying to get your, you know, catch the speed of the game against the fastest guy in the league after missing training camp in the first week of preseason. But I thought Hughes looked pretty good in his debut. I think what the Canucks like about that pairing is it's mobile, where there are issues about Oliver Ekman Larson and his skating and his ability to sort of keep up with the pace of play. And we know when it's against the Oilers, particularly in Edmonton, it's generally a high-paced game. So I, I think the plan is going to try to be to get Hughes and Pullman out as much as they can against that McDavid dry side line. And we'll see if that works for the Vancouver Canucks. The Oilers with last change, obviously, they're going to have something to say about that. Dave Tippett with the option of splitting those two or he can keep the dynamic duo together. And I think the Canucks will see a little bit of uh, everything from them. And of course, when it's the Oilers, you have to be disciplined. You can't afford to put them on the power play They've had the best power play in the NHL the last two years running, and I was just looking at this this morning. Nobody in the NHL has scored more power play goals over the last two seasons than Leon Dreisaitl, and I just have a hunch that Connor McDavid probably has an assist on uh, a fair number uh, of those power play goals. So for the Canucks, penalty kill was an issue through the preseason. Uh, they have moved some parts around here. The, pre the penalty killing in the preseason uh, was not good enough, quite frankly. I mean, they gave up 10 power play goals in the seven preseason games they played, and now you go up against the best power play in the league. So uh, I think that's the game within the game that I'm going to be watching tonight. And if you're the Canucks, you know, do your part, stay out of the penalty box. Those are the easiest penalties uh, to kill, the ones that you don't take in the first yeah, place. Yeah. Um, uh, Niels Hoaglander, is he going to be a top six forward like he was last year? Doesn't look like it. And part of that is they've brought in a guy like Connor Garland, who appears to have the starting job on the line, basically has Hoaglander's job from yeah. last year. It looks like Garland's going to play with Horvat and Pearson, and that leaves Hoaglander on right wing with Jason Dickinson. And I have to say, Dickinson was fairly underwhelming in the preseason. Now, yeah. I know his value will come in the matchup game, in the defensive game. You don't see a lot of that in exhibition action. So uh, I'm not concerned about Jason Dickinson, but this is a player that the Canucks acquired and then they signed, and they have said throughout that they think there's more of an offensive upside to Jason Dickinson's game. I'm not convinced of that. And in fact, when you look at the second power play unit that they were running at their morning skate in Edmonton, Justin Dowling on the second unit power play, because somebody's got to take face-offs. They've got Garland out there. They've got Pearson. They've got Hoaglander. But they were lacking a, a centerman for that group. And I'm a little surprised that Dickinson wasn't the guy. Uh, again, they talked him up as having some offensive chops. And then it looks like Justin Dowling, who is essentially a walk-on, has made this hockey club and good for him, but I don't know if it's in the best interest of the hockey club long term to have Justin Dowling on the second power play. Now, keep in mind, Brock Besser out of the lineup. So when Besser returns, uh, he's definitely going to have a spot on the power play and we'll see how things shake down. But for Hoaglander, uh, a half a point a game guy last year in an impressive, impressive rookie season, I don't know if he can generate that kind of offense if he's on the third line and his centerman is a guy like Jason mm. Dickinson who has not really shown any sort of regular offensive production over his time in the National Hockey League. Moving forward, uh, Jeff, you can use this trivia. Bridgetown is the capital of Barbados. There you go. Oh. 
I thought I thought Saskatoon was the city of bridges. I'm, I'm, I'm more trivia. Thank you so much for that, right. Jeff. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Jeff. <laughs> we'll talk to you next week. All right, All right guys, Jeff. Thanks, thanks Jeff. Uh, Jeff uh, Patterson from Sikaris and uh, Price.